Yasmani Grandal is hitting only 139, but according to more advanced metrics, it may be one of the best offensive performances of his career. Initially, this may sound crazy, but in today's video, we are going to dive into exactly how this could be possible. But before we jump into it guys, if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel and you want to continue to see more of it, it'd mean a lot if you'd click that subscribe button. I'm a numbers guy, and only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed, so show your support by clicking the subscribe button down below. Before we can even begin to understand how this could be possible, we first need to recap how metrics have evolved over the history of the game. I've done a few different videos talking about specific advanced stats, so this recap will be pretty brief. If you need more information, links in the description. When I think of the classic stats used to evaluate hitters in the past, the first few outdated statistics that come to mind are RBIs and batting average. Although these numbers are typically better for good hitters, they leave much of what other things hitters are accomplishing at the plate out, such as reaching base by having a good sense of the zone and drawing walks. That being said, we move into the next generation of stats I associate with the Moneyball mindset, evaluating exactly what the classic stats miss out on. The first idea obviously resulted in on-base percentage, being a better evaluation of a hitter than batting average ever was. People who get on base more, however they may be doing it, are more valuable than those who are getting on base less. But also, all hits aren't equal. A home run is more valuable than a single. Thus, slugging percentage was born, a stat that provides more credit to extra base hits than singles. In combining these stats together, we have a pretty commonly used stat used to evaluate hitters' production capabilities in total. OPS, or On Base Plus Slugging. This stat is a great basic catch-all stat, since it captures everything from valuing different types of hits properly, as well as including walks in the final calculation. But even this stat had to give way for the higher standards of our new age statistics. These new stats are advanced, and can be quite confusing if you haven't watched any of my videos diving into how they're calculated and why you should use them. They take tons of different things into account, such as how playing in different ballparks affect a player's performance, and eliminating the different quality of fielders in situations spread across Major League Baseball. These stats are improvements from each of the older systems, purely because there was more thought put into what aspects of the game can actually be an effective way to evaluate player performance. The overall goal of the New Age statistics was simply to find stats that can bridge the gap between good stats and success. As we'll see in our video today, you can be making a positive impact on your team offensively without having a high batting average. The last thing before we jump into the crazy example of Grindal's performances this year that I'd like to cover is just going to be a quick recap on the important stats that show us how Yasmani is actually performing this year since his batting average is quite misleading. The two most important stats we'll look at today are WOBA and WRC+. Talking about WOBA first, this stands for Weighted On Base Average. This is a stat that is put to the same scale as the average MLB batting average each year to keep it easy to understand. And while the equation is quite confusing upon first glance, really what this stat does well is valuing each outcome in a game separately, as you can tell from the difference between the unintentional walk rate here and the home run rate. Then to WRC+, this stat stands for Weighted Runs Created Plus, and the idea behind this stat is that it is a catch-all offensive production statistic used to quantify a player's value in a friendly way by displaying them in runs. Plus means that it's put to a 100 scale, 100 being average. So anything above that mark is above league average, and anything below it would be below league average. Now, let's take a look at Grandal's 2021 stats to see how a hitter with a sub-200 batting average could possibly be considered to have a positive impact on his team's performance at the dish. To look at the classic stats we talked about before, we can see that obviously Grandal's batting average is far below what is considered to be league average. But comparing that to his on-base percentage, we will notice that he's actually getting on base at a higher rate than the average player. Slugging is about the same as league average, so nothing much to see here. But circling back to our first two stats, what could account for such a large gap between his batting average and his on-base percentage? Well, it's that he's walking. A lot. Grandal's 28% walk percentage would be the fifth highest all time among qualified hitters, if it were to stay that way for the rest of the year. The top four in front of him? Well, those are all held by Barry Bonds in his four straight MVP seasons from 2001 to 2004. That's unbelievable. And while Bonds did this while being the most feared hitter in baseball, Grandal is doing it by only swinging at 25% of pitches. The lowest swing percentage in the past two decades among qualified hitters is 30%. So if you're someone who has only ever used batting average as a measure of a hitter's success, you'd think that Grandal is having a poor year. 
but in taking a second to review what's actually going on, you'd notice that he's actually performing pretty dang well for a catcher in this league. Moving on to our advanced stats, if we look at Grandal's Woba this year, we will see that it sits right at the 360 range. That's much above average for any hitter, let alone a catcher. His expected Woba is even higher than that at 395 at the time of recording this video. Then, his weighted runs created plus is 132, meaning his offensive performance up to this point in the season is 32% better than the average MLB player. That ranks fourth among catchers, with a similar number or above of at bats as him up until this point of the season. The other cool stat that I noticed that although Grandal isn't swinging much this year, when he does, he is making hard contact. His 42.2% hard hit rate is in the 98th percentile in the league. All this being said, Grandal's performance simply cannot be evaluated by simple stats like batting average. Among all new age statistics, the season he is having is the best he's had since entering the league in 2012. So what are my main takeaways from what we've talked about today? This isn't something that happens frequently but it's a good example of how beneficial the new statistics we have in the game today can shine a better light on the performance of MLB players than previous stats ever could. Grandal is walking a lot. By not swinging a ton, which results in him not swinging pitches out of the zone, and then he smacks the ball when he does opt to swing. His low batting average is likely to even out a little bit as the season goes on, but it sure is fun to look at crazy discrepancies in statistics like this one. And to think that all of this talk doesn't even take into the account the impact he's having behind the plate, it's very hard to argue that Grandal isn't making a positive impact on the first place in the AL Central White Sox this season. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.